Model steam engines top tip time part 65. This is quite a long episode. It features an old Stuart 10V, which did not run very well at all when I first received it. The solution ended up being very simple. And I show the entire process in this video. This is a compilation video taken from a series of three videos when I managed to turn the engine from a sow's ear into a silk purse. Well, maybe not as accurate as that, but it was a lot better. Sit back and relax, take your medication, and let the show begin. A Stuart Models 10V with reversing gear. The customer reports that it doesn't run very well at all, sometimes needs a push to start, and has no power. What are my first impressions? The engine seems to be quite well engineered. I don't like the way that the flywheel is such a great distance from the eccentrics right on the end of the crankshaft. I'll have a close look at this. The flywheel is loose on the crankshaft and there's some play in the front bearing, but none of this is too bad, and doesn't explain the problems that the owner's having with the engine. First of all, I'm putting some lubricating oil into the compressed air connector. That makes sure that the cylinders receive adequate lubrication. I don't run the engine for very long though. Before I do that, I need to lubricate every moving part that I can see. That should be okay now, so it's time to open the valve to admit the compressed air. And the first thing I can hear is some compressed air going into the steam chest and blowing straight out of the exhaust outlet. This is not a good sign, but it could be something else. Eventually when I rotate the crankshaft the engine starts. And as you can see the flywheel is a bit eccentric, I don't like that, but I can live with it for the moment. Time to take it apart, starting with the steam chest cover and removing the four 7BA nuts. You will notice on this engine that two of the studs are longer to hold the bracket to support the reversing mechanism. I need to break the seal between the steam chest cover and the steam chest. For this I'm using my blunt scalpel once again. What I'm doing at the moment is rotating the crankshaft to have a look at the valve events and they're a little bit bizarre. I'm going to leave it like this for the moment and put the steam chest cover back in place because I want to have a feel at the valve setting. From my experience this does not seem to be a piston blow by problem. Maybe the pistons will be okay, I'll have a look at them in another video. The valve timing seems to be very hit or miss on this engine. It's reluctant to start sometimes. And as the owner of the engine pointed out, it has no power at all. Someone's done a repair to the other eccentric sheave using a massive grub screw. But this one's still original, with a very small slotted grub screw in place. Resetting the valve timing has made a very slight difference, but it's only at one end of the stroke. The next part of the job is very fiddly. These are very small bolts with not a lot of access. I need to take off the inlet manifold so I can apply compressed air to each side of the engine individually. First of all this side. Now this is basically a single cylinder steam engine dragging the dead weight of another single cylinder steam engine is going to make matters worse. Have you ever seen the video that featured this double 10 steam engine? It has a very poorly made crankshaft which is a write off. So why have I brought this into the picture? Well this engine's okay. If you think about it, it had a damaged crankshaft, that's why it's no good. But the valve events were always fairly good. Here's the other engine that I'm working on. And here's the valve in the steam chest, pretty much like the other one. It goes up and down, it uncovers the ports. And here it is again. It's a bit dirty and oily and not very well made, but as you can see, the valve goes up and down and uncovers the ports. Once again, this is the one I'm working on that's come from the Netherlands, and this doesn't work. I need to remove the slide valve. The problem is with the slide valve, it's in the wrong way round. And what I'm doing at the moment is removing the die block from the expansion link. Normally, a die block in an expansion link is literally a block, shaped to fit in the slot. But on such a small engine, it's just a bush. I need to disassemble this part of the valve gear so I can do this. Remove the steam chest. With the steam chest and slide valve removed, you can clearly see the state of the port face, and the good news is it's okay. The port face isn't damaged in any way, it's in good condition. The problem is with the slide valve, but while I have the port face uncovered, I'll give it a wipe with a cloth to clean it up. And once I remove some of the grime and dirt, as you can see the port face is fine. 
This is only stage one of the repair. I need to see if my theory works, which it will, and I'll be repeating this part of the job on both sides, and I'll be using some 400 grit wet dry sandpaper to really clean up the ports, and making new gaskets too. But for now what's required is a bit of bench work. If you look carefully at this slide valve you will see that it is not square. What I'm currently doing is filing the slot using a needle file to take the crossbar that's connected to the valve rod. And by doing this I'll be able to refit the valve, but this time it will be 90 degrees the other way. I'm cleaning the slide valve with a cloth before refitting it. In this clip you can really see how small double tens are. And if I drop the die block on the workshop floor, then it's going to be gone forever, so I'm being very careful not to do that. I was pleased to see proper pins for the valve gear, because often you find there's just bolts put through here. And really, it's not a problem on this part, because the bolt thread wouldn't be in contact with anything else other than the die block. But proper pins are much better. But steam engine valve gear always needs to be fitted with pins, not bolts. Now it's time for yet another reassembly. I've had this engine apart a couple of times to have a look at things, and I'm testing it each step of the way. I'll be running it in the next clip, but please bear in mind the two cylinders are still separated. I can only put compressed air into one of them, and the engine is not self-starting. And I'm pleased to see in here that there is an immediate improvement. It's not perfect yet, but it's only running on one side, and now I actually have to put pressure on the flywheel to stop it before it had no power at all. So altering the position of the valve in this steam chest has made a big difference. I don't know what the other one's going to be like because I haven't been inside that yet. I think the other slide valve would probably also be fitted the wrong way. Since I started working on this engine, the 7BA grub screw in the eccentric sheave has been really bothering me because I've seen these break off and then there can be a pain to remove. I've re-threaded the eccentric sheave 6BA. And if you look in the Allen key at the left, there is a long 6BA Allen grub screw, which I'm going to shorten to clamp the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft. Time now to set the valve timing. This is only a temporary fix. I'll set the valve timing accurately when I finally pull the engine down to complete the repair. This clip's interesting. I call it setting the valve gear incorrectly. I'll slow the clip down so you can see what's happening more clearly. At first glance in the previous clip it looked like the crankshaft was rotating, but as you can see in this clip it's not, it's just oscillating back and forth. That's a lot better, the engine's still running on one cylinder only, and it's surprisingly powerful. So hopefully once I change the position of the other slide valve at the other end, and set the timing at the other end, it should run quite well. So I think in the case of this particular slide valve, that was the problem. I just hope it's the same at the other side. The grub screw's already been replaced at the other side with quite a big one, which is not a bad thing. Very soon I'll put some compressed air into the inlet manifold which will feed both cylinders. But don't forget, one side of the engine's working okay, but the other side isn't, so we'll see how it goes. Well, as you can see, it's a lot more positive and there's a lot more power. The engine seems to self-start every time and runs very slowly, and I haven't done the other side yet. The next part of the job is to remove the entire steam chest from the cylinder, and I had to move the valve gear into a specific position to allow the expansion link to clear the valve fork as I remove the steam chest. Here's the valve, and I'm going to turn this round and fit it the other way. Now there's some debate on this. Most people say, well, when you look at the plans and you look at drawings, it is fitted the way that it's shown, and I do agree. But by fitting the valve in this position, it can't uncover the ports fully, and I would really say, if the slide valve is really designed to be in the position that it was originally, why is the steam chest so wide? All I can say is, I've done this on quite a few Stuart engines, the small 
double tens, single tens, S50s and 10Hs or whatever, and they all seem to run better with the valve and the other way around. So I'll just leave the argument there. I may be wrong, I freely admit this, but if anyone else would like to join the argument, then that's fine. I'm not going to answer any questions unless you're a Patreon supporter. To save some time though, I'm not going to show the fact that I did have to take it apart again and readjust the valve position, but here, for all to see, is the valve in the correct position, and I can now replace the steam chest cover, refit the bracket that holds the reversing lever, and when everything is bolted back together, I can start the adjustment of the eccentric. Here's the steam chest cover bolted back in place along with the bracket, and I just need to fit a nut in this position to stop the retaining arm from falling off. Time now to connect the compressed air line and see what happens. Now that is much better. It has a lot of power. It's time to give it another oiling because it's been running for quite a while. It's not the most silent engine I've ever worked on, but it's not a massive problem. This really does have power about 10 times the power it had when I got it out of the box that it came in. And the engine does not seem to be stalling at all. I open the air valve and it goes, it doesn't just sit there hissing. That's what it did before. What I'm doing at the moment is notching up the engine, moving the lever back towards reverse. And this is a good sign that the engine is okay if it still runs when it's well notched up. In my videos, steam engines always sound a lot worse than they are, because, look, when I lift it off the soundboard, it's entirely different. So what have I done really to get this engine to this state from what it was? Well, I've turned the valves round as I've shown. I reset the position of the slide valves on the valve spindles, and then I set the eccentrics correctly. And in my opinion, no other way of doing this job would have been quite so successful. That is it for this longer than usual compilation, showing how to make a Stuart double 10 V steam engine run as it should. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.